In this video, we're going to answer the question, how does the DDA affect the colors of sockets and switches? This question relates to the video that Gary and Gordon made recently on the power pole by Atcor. So if you haven't seen that video, please do go and check it out. One of the features of that product is that it can accept Marco's DDA compliant light gray or charcoal center lids. So the question naturally arises, what does the color of the lid have to do with anything? Well, first of all, we need to know that DDA stands for Disability Discrimination Act, which was an act of parliament to make it unlawful to discriminate against disabled persons in connection with employment, the provision of goods, facilities and services, or the disposal or management of premises. One of the areas that this impacts on is the building regulations, and specifically Part M, which deals with the access to and the use of buildings. One common theme that runs through the approved document volume two, which relates to buildings other than dwellings, is making sure that the building is designed and constructed so that partially sighted persons can access and make use of it. One way to do this is by providing services and equipment that contrast visually with the surrounding fabric of the building. This applies to all sorts of areas such as handrails on stairs, ramp surfaces, and even curbs. It also applies to electrical accessories such as switches and sockets. And you may have noticed this yourself where perhaps dark gray sockets with white switches are mounted onto white trunking or walls. And this is so partially sighted persons can more easily identify, access and make use of them. So the fact that the Atcor power pole has the option to insert a lid of a color other than white means that white accessories on there could possibly create an acceptable solution to the requirements of approved document M volume two. So there we go. We've seen how the DDA affects the colors of switches and sockets, and even potentially the containment that they are mounted onto, and how the power pole by Atcor could potentially meet these requirements. But as always, we want to hear from you. Do you work on projects where the requirements of approved document M volume two apply? What other solutions have you seen that help to meet these requirements? Do you have any experience with installing the power pole from Atcor? Whatever your thoughts and questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And as always, thank you very much for watching.